Hello and welcome to the Tennessee Curriculum Center website. Um, my name is Janice Gordon and I was one of many teachers working last week at the Maryville College in order to uh, pilot this resource submission process. And now it's time for all of the high school teachers to come on board and flesh out um, the high school standards. And I wanted to take the opportunity um, to kind of walk you through this process so that you don't deal with kind of the same couple of days that we all dealt with. Um, I talked to Richard Audette and suggested that maybe a short video would be the easiest way to manage this. So I hope you find this helpful. First things first, we need to actually direct you to the correct website, and that website would be www.tncurriculumcenter.org. And when you actually click on that, um, it will take you to this website. Now, at any point while you're watching this video, you can pause it so that you can um, get yourself onto the website and you can actually follow along and complete these tasks as I, as I show you. That might be the easiest way to do it or just watch it all the way through and maybe that will be enough. Now, many of you have already visited this site um, because you knew you were going to be working on this resource submission process. Um, and it is fabulous. Every single teacher left there last week, um, Friday afternoon, just um, completely pumped about what we were able to accomplish and what this may do for Tennessee teachers, and not only Tennessee teachers, but teachers across the country. Um, we think this resource is going to be absolutely invaluable, so we hope that you find the same thing when you finish your, your work. Um, if you look at the Tennessee Curriculum Center website, um, the roadmap actually will direct you to the, the various courses, or you might just want to select a subject area. In my case, it's um, science. And before I do that, let me, let me quickly show you something. Down at the bottom of this particular page, if you're looking at that page with me, you'll see um, that there's a member login. And I'm, I'm logged in as a member. When we registered on Monday, um, there was, and it, my computer won't do this. My computer continually recognizes me on this site. Click on member login on your computer and see if you can log in as a new user. Um, I will tell you that the first day, several teachers had trouble with this one um, part of the activity because the same username password can be utilized for the old STEM resources website. So if you ever logged on to the old STEM resources website, it's your exact same username password, and it is linked to your email address. So several teachers forgot that they had already registered on STEM resources, and they were trying to register with an email address that the computer or the website already recognized. So then they had to go and resubmit, try to find their password, and they had more than one email address, and da-da-da-da. So if you have trouble with that, let me direct you to someone that you need to contact um, and who can help you with all of this. And that someone happens to be Jeff Hill, and he is the webmaster for, was the webmaster for STEM Resources and is the webmaster for the Tennessee Curriculum Center, and he is amazing. Um, he can answer any question that you possibly have, and keep in mind that there are still some kinks that we're trying to work out, and Jeff is very quick to respond and very quick to solve the issue that you may have, and I wish you'd all been there on Monday of last week to watch the evolution of this website over the course of five days. Absolutely fascinating. So if you have questions, contact Jeff about your login. Now, what you are going to be doing, you're going to be submitting resources that are tried and true, resources that you know work. We made a very special emphasis on the fact that we wanted to get quantity, I mean quality, not quantity. You know, we're not looking for you to submit 1,400 resources. We're looking for you to submit some really quality resources that any Tennessee biology teacher, chemistry teacher, physics teacher could click on and go, wow, where's this been my whole life? Um, and, and wouldn't have to do much adapt adaptation to us to it. Now, this is phase one. Phase two, you'll be able to submit your own original resources. And then phase three, we're going to open it up to allow any teacher to submit. And there is a submission approval process. But right now, what we're looking for is at, we're looking for resources that are already out there and, and readily available. And we just want to link them to a particular standard and content thread. So let me show you the, the way that I found personally to be the best way to do this um, over the course of four or five days of work. Now I'm taking you through science since that's my area. I'm going to go into biology and let's say that I found a really great resource for, um, let me kind of move this up, for cell processes. So I'm going to click on cell processes. It's going to take me directly to um, the content thread for cell processes. And um, this is where I find this site so incredibly fascinating. 
it unpacks the ideas in, in this particular topic thread. It gives you some questions to focus your instruction, academic vocabulary. I mean, such a wealth of information here alone. Then I want to click on particularly um, this course level expectation, describe the processes of cell growth and reproduction. When I click on this, it's going to take me directly to this site, this page. Now you can see according to the tabs, I've got curriculum materials, teacher resources, assessments, student resources, and other resources. Um, curriculum materials, any kind of lesson plans, um, teacher resources, any background information for the teacher pers personally. Assessment could be formative, could be a quick quiz, could be a summative. Student resources, what about practice and enrichment for the student. And then other resources, I'm not sure where this falls, but I know it's really great and I need to be able to include it. Um, when teachers search this site, if they want um, a test on mitosis, they would click on the assessment button. Now what you'll see here is that there are no resources yet for this particular um, content thread. So I want to add one. When, in order to do so, very simple process, I just need to, when I'm logged in, and only if I'm logged in, you can't add anything if you were just visiting the site, and you can see it says, hi, Janice Gordon. I want to add a resource, so I'm going to double click on um, add a resource. When I do so, I get this um, template. I need a title, I need the URL address, I need to know what type of resource it is. I need to click and describe what um, the visitor will find at this particular URL. I need to link it to any other expectations that may be out there. And I need to talk a little bit about why this particular website or resource happens to fit that um, CLE. And then down at the bottom, I'll pull this down just a little bit so you can see the last item. Um, I want to type in keywords separated by a comma that may help another visitor find this resource. So if it is an assessment, then I would put assessment, mitosis, um, separated by a comma, maybe practice, maybe summative assessment. Whatever it happens to be, you know what you type in when you're looking for resources on the web. So you want to type in something that's going to direct teachers to it. So this is where the submission process is going to take place. Now, a lot of teachers last week really kind of just jumped in with both feet and started typing in a title and put in a URL address and typed a lot of information here. And then they got booted off the um, internet and lost everything because the website isn't designed to, um, to automatically save. So this is what several of us found to be um, incredibly beneficial. We decided it would be best to actually start typing and do all of our work in Word. So now I have um, probably five Word documents on the various content strands of resources that I found, how they link directly to the GLE or CLE, um, the, the website, and then the description. Okay, so this is the way that I found to be the easiest. I actually take all this information, type it up in Word, um, review it, spell check it, make sure that it sounds right, double check it twice, and then for me, it's easier for me just to highlight the entire thing and copy it and then go back to that particular website and paste it. Now, the only way to really paste it on here, or the best place to paste it, is to actually paste it inside this um, first word box. Then I insert it. Now you're probably thinking what a lot of people were thinking, Janice, all that doesn't go in there. Why would you do that? Well, it's easier for me to kind of just then go forward. Instead of toggling back and forth, it's easy for me just to um, go in this way and actually type it in and copy and paste it. So I've got my title in. And I really don't need the um, CLE again. I really don't. So I'm going to take that entire CLE and I'm going to cut that out. I have it in my Word document still, right? I'm going to cut that website and I'm going to then um, paste it in here at the top. Got to get my little pen working for me. Now I've got the website in. Now I kind of want to, um, I want to delete all of these lines. And the last thing I need to do, honestly, is just move this one um, paragraph down here to the bottom. Now, I've got um, a title, a URL. I need to select what type of resources it is. Actually, it's kind of a student resource. I would call it a practice resource because they actually get to go through and watch mitosis and meiosis and compare them side to side. And the only other thing to do 
down here is to actually include the keywords. Okay, so I might want to come in here and include some keywords on this particular resource. So I typed in mitosis, meiosis, and animation. So that leads me to kind of come back up here and talk just briefly about this. We had lots of discussion going on about um, what you select here. I mean, I would call it a practice in my classroom, but it truly is an animation. So there are a lot of people that may have called that media. Um, and actually, technically speaking, I guess truly it is. Um, more teachers are probably going to look for media, animation, that sort of thing. They will practice, which is why the keyword's so important. If you put animation in it, or put, sorry about that, if you put practice in that, then teachers can see for themselves what it seems to link to. Now, we're done. Now I scroll down to the bottom right here, and all I have to do is click on Save Resource and it will save it and you can see now on your resource sources page and this will be the first one that you guys do um, you'll see that it is boxed in red and these are my resources under Janice Gordon as I've logged in as a member um, how sales divide and you'll notice that it says not submitted I've only posted it on the website what we did in the in the process of that whole week at Maryville is we exchanged um, passwords with each other and we went in and um, reviewed each other's work we did not review the website we made the assumption that everyone that was there in that workshop together that we were all um, qualified to find qualified resources and we wouldn't second guess that but we did want to double check um, spelling and grammatical errors and that sort of thing once you had someone review it then we just submitted it for approval and then it showed up as a blue box Notice that you can still edit and delete it in the blue box. Now, I, I know Richard may have not decided exactly what we should do as high school teachers on our own submissions, and maybe we can come up with a very simple process where we can exchange passwords and, and look at each other's work and then submit after another set of eyes has looked at it. I know I always appreciate that. I make errors the faster I work. So, so we'll decide on that maybe at a later time. Um, I hope this has been useful for you. By the way, your resources always show up underneath your site. So this is what a great tool for us. You find all these wonderful links and all these wonderful activities, and you can just click on your resources and find them, and it links you directly back to it. So if you'll see that site I just added, I click on that, and boom, here I am at the Nova site where I can launch that interactive right in front of my classroom and, and, and show it on the big screen. If you have any questions, again, let me reiterate that those um, questions need to go directly to Webmaster um, Jeff Hill if it involves anything about the website itself. If it's a content question or how should I do this, that, or the other, um, you can feel free to contact me or Richard Aldet. Um, I can assure you that I'm not um, the best person to ask, but if it, if, if it involves a simple question like, hey, Janice, I tried this and I can't get this to load up, or how would you, you know, how would you do ba da 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 da? I can help you with those sorts of questions since I since I went through the process myself. Any other bigger questions than that probably need to go directly to Richard or um, technical questions to Jeff. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions about the um, video itself, obviously contact me at that website. Um, good luck and happy resource hunting.